Welcome back to the course on electronic packaging and manufacturing and we will take off from where we left last time. We had talked about in the last lecture, we had talked about ball grid array packages. So, today what we will do is we will look into the next kind type of package or kind of package area array packages again. It is called the LGA or the land grid array. Okay. So, the concepts that we will cover today, we will start with land grid array and then we are going to talk about some other package configurations and finally, go to something called chip scale package or and define what is called a package efficiency or packaging efficiency. Okay. So, these are the concepts that we are going to cover today starting with LGA or land grid array. Okay. So, what is LGA? So, what we will do is first we will look at the definition and see what we are talking about. Okay. So, a land grid array, this is a definition from something called Technopedia. Let me first read this. A land grid array or LGA is an integrated circuit design involving a square grid of contacts. Okay. It's typically, it is square, it is not necessary that it has to be a square. Okay. These contacts that are connected to the other components of the printed circuit board. So, if you look at just this first sentence, this is applicable to pin grid array, this is applicable to ball grid array. Okay. Now, this is where the differentiate, differentiating feature of LGA comes in. The term which means LGA refers to a socket design, where the certain components are disconnected from the actual circuit board and integrated into the board structure in particularly new ways. Okay. So, typically what we have seen some features or components what we have seen in a package is removed from there and put in the socket. Okay. The sentence is still not very clear except that we, we understand in English what it means. Third one. In contrast to most other designs, LGA configurations have pins in the socket rather than on the chip. Now, this makes it clear. The pins or the interconnections are in the socket instead of on the package or the chip carrier. Okay. So far, what did we see? When we looked at a PGA, right? the pins were connected to the package on the underside like this. When we looked at a BGA, it was the same. It, instead of pins, it was solder ball, which was in turn connected to the solder pads on the motherboard. But when we talk of LGA, these connections, in this case pins again, or also called LANs, are attached not on the package side, but on the motherboard side. So, that is the major difference. If you look at this picture, it probably is a little more clear. The package side which is shown on the left, what do we see? What we see there are pads on the package side. These are not pins like a PGA, these are not solder balls like a VGA, but these are just plated pads correct and on the right hand side what you see is the socket and the socket has these pins I do not know how clear it is from this picture, but it is a socket that has the pins coming out from it okay? in a plane normal to the motherboard and those pins are going to make a contact with the corresponding pads on the package side. On this package side, a pin over here is going to make a connection with a pad on this package side. The picture that you see on the right is a, is a pretty well known package that came out of Intel probably more than 10 years back. It was known as the Intel 771 socket. It was a land grid array socket okay. and it was used in some of Intel's Pentium microprocessors, LGA, land grid array. Now, how does this connection happen? I will otherwise, the next picture I am going to show you is this. 
where what you see is this is a one connector coming out of the socket. This is an FEA finite element analysis. What you see coming out of here is one of the lands okay. and this is the this is one configuration okay this is it is not like it has to be like this but this is how it is and probably this plot i may be a little uh, off but probably this shows the stress or this is a plot of the stress that is inside this at different points in this land okay now what we will do is we will try to go to the whiteboard and I will try to draw how a land grid array looks like. Okay. So, let us say this is my motherboard again I am drawing a connection here and then I will use a different green. to denote the package side okay. and then this has your whatever the silicon sitting inside and then maybe this is the plastic package whatever. Now, what do we do with the connections? The package side is going to have these pads. In pin grid array, we saw pins coming out of the package. In ball grid array, we had solder balls coming out of the package. But in land grid array, we just have what you call these pads. Now, this is my socket. From the socket, what I will have, sorry, I will choose a different color. From the socket side, we have these connector pins or lands coming out. So, now what happens is in a land grid array, sorry, let me. In a land grid array, you put some force and as a result what happens is these lands press against these pads and the connection is made. And once you remove this loading force, then of course the connection becomes loose and this package can be removed. Okay. So, what did we see? So, lands or pins on the socket okay, and pads on the substrate. Second is loading force ensures connection and this arrangement like pin grid array 
is removable or detachable. Okay. All right. So let us go back and again take a look. at these two pictures and see what we just talked about. And here now you see this liver, there is a kind of a cover at the top. So, this, this liver leads to the loading force. As you pull it down, the package is pressed against the socket and the connections are made. Okay. All right. So, what you see is no solder joints or balls uses lands and connection pads. The pins or the lands are on the socket side. And the other thing that I want to tell you is a land grid array compared to a solder or a PGA. Okay, these land pins are very thin, very much more delicate compared to the pins of a pin of a PGA. Okay. But this leads to lower use of lead. If you think about solder and all, this looks leads to lower use of lead and so it can be designed for something called better ROHS, ROHS stands for restrictions of hazardous substances. Okay. We are going to discuss this later, but now also maybe I can make a mention over here that this solder typically consisted of lead and now what happens is over the last decade there has been a push even more than a decade I would say there has been a push to go towards lead free solder. Okay. So, therefore, new solder uh, compounds new materials are being synthesized material scientists have been thinking about various formulations of coming up with lead free solder. You can you can imagine the impact of this you know there is I mean the amount of electronic products substances and therefore connections is enormous across the world. Now, if you have to change everything it is a humongous task. Okay. So, but the industry is gearing up to that and I think right now we are almost there almost uh, most uh, almost all new products today uh, are made of lead free solders. Okay. So, restrictions of hazardous substances that becomes important. Okay, from environmental point of view. And to this end LGA when it first came up this was a major uh, advantage that you know even if we have to let use lead, lead solder the amount of lead that we are using is smaller. Okay. The advantages these are thinner compared to uh, PGAs. So, therefore, again shorter electrical paths is thinner and lighter packages LGS allow for that and ease of assembly disassembly which we talked about that is an advantage of any of these pin type of interconnections whether it is LGA or PGA and a disadvantage for a connection like BGA or ball grid array. Okay. So, that is LG. Next we are going to talk about some other lead con lead configurations. Okay that was lead LED PB okay, the element here LED is lead as an interconnect. <laughs> okay. We have to keep all these in mind lead free solder this is lead configurations and then you also have the LID lead which is the cover. Okay. So, whenever I use this word just be careful because they are all similar sounding and every time I may not be spelling it out, uh, but just keep in mind be conscious and and try to make out in what context I am using it. Okay. So, this is lead configurations in terms of interconnection connections. Insertion mount, so through hole mount we have seen this before you see this kind of package over here the connectors come out only from one side of the package. Okay. Now, it could have been a serial 1 1 1 1 1 1, but to give it better mechanical rigidity and stability you see that this connection takes a bend towards the left towards the right sorry the next one takes a bend towards the left 
and so you have this crisscross one one like this two like this then three like this four like this okay so one like this two like this and then these pins go to corresponding holes on the motherboard so pin in hole type package we have seen this before and pga which is pin grid array package okay so again this is configuration in terms of we have discussed this before in terms of the interconnection method this is pin in hole the others are surface mount so we had discussed this before now again now we know what is a ball grid array that is a surface mount technology okay pin grid array also when used with a socket like this is a surface mount technology because yeah of course it goes through instead of holes on the motherboard it goes into the holes on the socket and now the rest of the motherboard is available to put more components okay and the back side can also be used it's typically not used because this is a very high density package typically it is not used but can be used it is available all right j lead package galwing leaded package leadless chip carrier we have discussed all this before and now we have added on surface mount what is known as the ball grid array so as you see the bga is connected on the on this side of the motherboard so it is mounted on the surface and each of these as said before also presents the reverse side of the surface for placement of other components so that's the advantage of surface mount technology surface mount technology is also often called smt surface mount technology very commonly used term okay let's move on to the next slide this one is known as the chip scale package what is a chip scale package of csp we will just briefly discuss each of these a little bit the csp stands for a chip scale package means that the size of the chip is comparable to the size of the package the package is less than 1.2 times the size of the ic let me take this example again this damaged package that i showed before while exhibiting ball grid array here what you see this shining part in the center that is a silicon chip this is a silicon and then this green square that is the package so you see that the package is significantly larger than the piece of silicon correct so if you want large number of uh, you know i interconnects then you need a larger package you need more number of solder balls or pins or lands okay chip scale package on the other hand the package is less than or equal to 1.2 times the size of the integrated circuit which is the piece of silicon with all the circuits inside okay so obviously it cannot be used in high end servers where or or even high end desktops or even any of the computers like laptops but however if you think of the personal digital assistants the cell phones uh, the tablets so here these c chip scale packages are important why because of two reasons one is first of all chip scale package is possible because these are nearly not those high density packages these are these do not have as many features or as much of computing horsepower so that part is good it allows for that it does not require that amount and why we put it is because these are products where there is severe space crunch okay there is not enough space to accommodate a large number of components so here if you can come up with chip scale packages it helps okay so the greatest advantage is size reduction okay no questions about that however csp just the term csp chip scale package does not give you apart from this does not give you much idea about what is the construction so there are several types of csps um, as we see here i'm not going to talk in details about each of these okay maybe if time permits we can come back 
but csp these are different kinds of uh, you know advanced packaging techniques the course this course is very fundamental um, so we will not go to the advanced packaging technologies but these are some of the examples where chip scale packages are possible okay these are also types of csps again the same things that are being shown here several examples flex interposer rigid substrate lead frame and wafer level wafer level just let just let me tell you a, just give you a brief idea of what wafer level is here actually the interconnections whether it's solder balls or whatever happens right on the wafer it is even before dicing the uh, wafer into small dies okay and then along with that it is uh, after that after this assembly it is cut and put on the package or on the motherboard that's called wafer level assembly all right so we are as i said i'll just flash this i'll keep this on the on the slide okay by the way this i forgot to mention the source this is from the book from rao tumala fundamentals of packaging fundamental or microelectronics packaging sorry okay so there is a definition of what is called a packaging or there's a yeah there's a expression called packaging efficiency which is this efficiency is ic size over package size okay and if you look at some of these example dual inline package that's huge the package ic is only 2% of the package size quad flat pack 5% if you go to ball grid array or csp that's 30 to 80% csp especially as i said 1.2 times so it has to be better more than 80% and bare chip if you just take it and put it on the motherboard no substrate nothing direct bonding of the uh, you know of the piece of silicon directly on the motherboard that is 100% clear that typically as of now if you are wondering how is it possible because from the chip i have to take out these connections to wire bonding on the on the leads so till now whatever we have discussed a bare chip with 100% packaging efficiency we have not seen and based on the technologies we have discussed so far it is not possible but in the next class we are going to talk about a technology called flip chip and in there we will see that how a bare chip uh, bare chip connection directly on the motherboard is possible and in which case the packaging efficiency would be 100% okay so that kind of brings us to the end of this lecture uh, what next the best package is no package at all okay so the can the manufacturer ship the chips with bgs or flex connectors on the test and burnt in wafer so as i was talking about can you have the connections directly on the wafer and this is called the wafer level flip chip okay so that looks like a trend right now or has been a trend actually for some years okay so we will discuss a bit about this especially when we talk about flip chip all right so for now Thank you very much and we will continue this in the next lecture. Thank you.